Uh, so if you're an able person living in Lagos, I want you to please pay close attention to what I have to say. And I would like you to listen to the end. All right. So understandably, you don't have to be an able person to feel the pain that is in the heart of most evil people in Lagos. Because I know what happened came out of the blues, right? And everybody was like, my goodness, what is this? Where is this coming from? I mean, some of us were even asking, please, who is that person that said that Lagos is a no man's land? Can we see the person? Nobody's ever going to show you who said it. Nobody will ever show you an evil man who said that. Because what they did was what we call in intelligence, Psy up is called psychological operation. I know because I know. I know how and when they cooked it and unleashed it. It was psychological operation. And it was not aimed at you because of the state elections. It was aimed at you because of the bigger prize that we are all pursuing in Abuja. And I'm going to explain this to you. You know, during the end SARS, during the end SARS, Bigotry was buried alive in front of the whole world. Religious fanaticism, tribal hate, all of that flew out the window. There was nothing like religion or tribe that showed up. That was why NSARS was so successful. And they had to end it the way they did because there was no other way it could have been ended. And from that moment till today, that same movement has remained alive. That movement was tagged structureless. That structureless movement didn't control a single state in Nigeria. But when the chips were down, several states were in their basket. And there is now contention taking place to redeem the golden prize. In Abuja. That's why there's court case going on. And that is a movement that the old order labeled structureless. Do you know how many old order politicians you retired on the 25th of February 2023? Do you know? Do you know the amount of anger they are now nursing against you? Do you know the pain? In their heart that they lost places they have never lost since their lives in politics it was all part of it that's why the ripples the ripple effect came and they said ah we will show them and they went into the weaver and reached for that old weapon they've always used all these years same old weapon, divide and conquer. Just tell them that Yoruba man should know that Yibo man is coming to take over your land. Once you say that, our people will rise up. It was phantom. It was non-existent. Ask like we've asked. Point to that one Yibo man who is dragging Lagos with any Yoruba man. Point one for me. Show me the person. Show me that Ibo man who is bragging up about, up, up and down the whole place saying, Lagos is a no man. I want to see the person. Nobody will show you because it does not exist. It was created to drive a wedge in the wheel of the movement that is been going together, riding together to go and take what was stolen from the people. The mandate that was stolen from the people. That's what they did if it wasn't for the state elections. Because look at the P2B movement. Who were the people at the forefront? Igbos didn't even support P2B as much as the Yorubas. Most of the Igbos were prevented from, from voting on the 25th of February. So who were the people that overwhelmingly voted to be in Lagos and gave him that kind of vote and to the point that he had to win Lagos? Who else has ever won Lagos from the main man who everybody believes owns Lagos? Who has done it before? It's Lagosians, Yoruba people. They were the ones who overwhelmingly. You can never tell me that Igbos voted Obi more than Yorubas to make Obi win Lagos. No, they were Yorubas who did it. 
Who are the people at the forefront of the OB movement? They are Yorubas. We have been like this. We have been together. Despite all the old wounds they told us we must observe. Despite all the old divisions they told us we must always keep our eyes on. We shunned all of that and worked together as one people. Disregarding tribe. Disregarding religion. Disregarding position. Disregarding everything that the old order has always used as weapon against us. And we came this far. And they have been panicking like there's no tomorrow. That's why they now decided, you know what? Let's go reach for that old weapon. Let's try it one more time. You know, they've been trying since then. Even before the election, they've been trying. None of it worked. But this time around, boom, let's do it. Let's do it. Igbo, Yoruba, Igbo, the old rivalry. Let's reawake that monster. And they did. And most of the people who fell victims didn't even know what was going on. That's why some of them are coming online to come and apologize for what they had done. They tickled you with that evil, phantom, non-existent psychological operation, wickedness, and you flowed with it and began to unleash mayhem on your brothers who have done nothing wrong to you. Igbos are not dragging Lagos with anybody. They just had to do their business. Ibos have supported people from almost every region. As long as you have good, there's good governance, Ibos don't care that much. We are not even supporting Obi because he's an Igbo man. It's because he's the best candidate. Nigerians said that, not Ibos. The greatest opposition Obi has received so far has come from the Igbo people. So what? where will Ibos be dragging Lagos from you? The same Somolu you're looking at today. If you think it's first day, in my whole life, and I came to Lagos for the first time in 1993, in my whole life, I have never seen a governor of Lagos state that is closer to the Igbos than Somolu. Somolu is probably the closest to the Igbos I've ever seen. The same Somolu you are coming to re-elect and then you are using bigotry to re-elect him. You are using the promotion of Igbo hate hating Igbo people to re-elect a man who is closest to Igbos than any other one I've seen in my lifetime. So who is fooling who? It was a psychological operation aimed at destroying the unity that we have built over the years, which is what we are now taking to Abuja to go and reclaim what we all believe was stolen that unity if it is tampered with reclaiming that mandate will become a pipe dream this was what all of this was about it wasn't about state it wasn't about Igbo Yoruba there's nothing going on between you and your Yoruba brother and sister don't mind these criminals I would never hate a Yoruba person forget about all those all those things are political weapons they use but we've gone past all of that we've gone past all of that some yoruba people were manhandled were beaten because they say they looked like Igbo. go hear them they're talking so it's not about yoruba Igbo. yoruba people are not the people who did this it's the same crop of satanic cabalistic Human beings who have held us down all these years, they are the ones. They are the ones because they feel so pained that many of the so-called uh, ogas and madams have been retired, permanently retired forever in politics. Some were retired on the 25th, some were retired on the 18th, and many of them are crying blood every day. So anyhow they can get at you, they will do it. That's why they launched this psychological operation on you. And many of you are falling for it. Don't fall for it. Love up on your brothers. Love up on your Yoruba brothers and sisters. Take this from me. I'm not doing this to make anybody feel good. Love up on your Yoruba brothers and sisters. This is the only way we are going to get these devils, these demons to knock their heads against the wall and smash their skulls. And we will let them know that we are wiser now than we were before. Because... 
the journey we started is not come to an end yet. You know why? It's not over. It's not over. You will see soon that it's not over until it's over. And mark my words, victory is waiting for us and we cannot be a divided house as we march on to victory. We have to march on to victory as one people because divided we fall, but united we stand. Let us stand united and in love. Okay? Don't hate anybody. Just love. Let love lead. All right? Love you, man. God bless you. Bye-bye.